no matter what, you know, no matter what's going on, no matter how bad it is, no matter how frustrating, no matter how tragic, no matter how disgusting or whatever, there is always something beautiful there if you look hard enough for it. Oh man, today I'm cleaning up, like I'm in the middle of working on a film and anybody who's worked on a film or a play or made an album or whatever, you know that when you're in the middle of a creative process, your life can turn into complete chaos. So today I've just, you know, gotten to the point where I feel like enough, it's too much, my mind is as cluttered as my apartment, I gotta clean up. So I figured I would include this in a video where um, I've been thinking a lot about the little things in life. And I've also been thinking about how, you know, sometimes you might be in an environment like this where you think it's just a complete disgusting mess. But if you really look closely, you'll find that there's a lot of little beautiful things in here. There's a lot of beautiful in this room. And it's just kind of a metaphor for a lot of things for me. So what I did today was I gave myself five minutes. And by the way, the sun is just blaring in the window here, you know, making me feel bad about not being outside, but I gotta take care of business. So I gave myself five minutes, picked up my camera, and I just shot, you know. Like I just shot as much as I could in here to see if I could find some beautiful things and just kind of accentuate them and share them in this video and show you that no matter where you are, you know, you might be in a place where you don't feel inspired, you don't think there's a lot of stuff in there that looks very good, but if you really look hard enough, you could find a lot of things that you can make look beautiful by just playing with the camera and just, you know, using your imagination. So that's what I did today. And the other thing is that um, I wanted to share was, you know, sometimes I think if you're just starting, I know I felt like this a few years ago, you know, you look at some of these YouTube videos and they look so amazing. They look like, you know, commercials, you know, like high production value commercials or short films. And you think, how can I possibly do that, you know? But what you don't realize is that a lot of that stuff starts off looking kind of like this, you know, at least metaphorically. Like a lot of those YouTubers and filmmakers in general, they shoot a ton of stuff. It's called coverage. And then they start to take things out in the editing process so that you don't see all the bad stuff. And I would, I would bet that at least 50% of what they shoot is completely unusable. But they pick out the best of what they shot and they put it together and they're, you know, amazing editors, amazing filmmakers, they're visionaries. That's what filmmaking is. You know, you don't just pick up your camera and everything that you shoot is perfect. You just try to get as much as you can. You try to be as intentional as you can if you're making like a narrative film like I do. But what I'm saying is that don't feel badly if you pick up your camera, especially if you're just starting and a lot of stuff that you shoot doesn't look as, you good, as good as you would like for it to look. Um, because once you get into the editing process, you'll see that once you put it together, you could put forth something that you're going to be really proud of. So anyway, that's all I want to say. I've made this intro much longer than the actual video. And check it out. I think you'll enjoy this. Lately, I've been thinking about how important the little things are. And um, I guess what I mean by that is the things that happen in life. <laughs> this sounds too broad already, but I've been thinking a lot about the things that we don't necessarily notice that are probably the most important things um, with regards to work certainly with regards to creating art, and also just in our day-to-day -day lives, you know, in our relationships, um, in the way we, you know, walk through our day-to-day -day existence, you know, the little things are really important. Like, for example, before I get to, you know, filmmaking and theater and music and all that kind of stuff, um, just the way you go about your day-to-day -to, -day to get the most out of it, you know, you should be really thinking about, well, I'm not going to say you should, but this is me speaking to myself. You know, I often think, you know, when I don't feel as well as I 
think I should be feeling, whether it be something, you know, like an ankle hurts or my shoulder hurts or something like that, or um, I feel a little more tired than I feel like I should. You know, like even if I sleep well, but I still don't feel 100% energetic during the day, you know, it's usually because I haven't been dealing with my nutrition the way I like to, you know, and, and the way I live my life and the art that I create and choose to perform, um, to write, to, you know, to endeavor upon requires a tremendous amount of energy, you know? I mean, anybody who's ever seen me on stage, I think they'll know, like, that takes a lot of energy, you know? It's like a, it's like an NBA playoff game, usually. It's crazy. And, um... So usually I know, you know, when I'm not feeling myself, I usually can take the responsibility and say, you know, you haven't been hydrating as well as you usually do. You haven't been eating as well as you usually do. And I mean, I never eat poorly. Like I've, I haven't had fast food probably since I was like 18 or something like that. And that was like 500 years ago. But, you know, sometimes I'll eat more sugar than I know that my body can handle. You know, um, again, I won't hydrate as much as I should. Maybe I'm not getting enough protein. You know, maybe my carbohydrates are too high. I mean, I usually know what I'm doing wrong, you know. And so when that happens, I make adjustments, but I'm just grateful to be able to be so conscious of that. You know, and it's the same thing with my work, you know. Like right now, I'm working on this film, obviously. And, um, or not obviously, if you haven't seen any of my videos, but if you've been following, you know that I'm working on this film. And um, usually when I get lost or when I get to a point where I'm kind of stuck or frustrated with where I'm at in the process and, you know, any project that I work on is always a long process. But this, this film has been a very long process for many reasons. But, you know, it's so easy for me to make excuses and come up with, you know, different versions of why I am where I'm at that have nothing to do with me, when in fact, 90% of the time it has everything to do with me. Like I'm not attending to it the way I know that I should, you know. I'm not giving 100% of myself every single day to the things that I need to do. And you know, some, like, I pretty much give 100% of myself to every day in many, many ways, you know. But I have to admit, sometimes, you know, like, when I work on a play or a film or whatever, it could take five years of my life. You know, my first play was six years of my life. Every single day for six years, I worked on that play. I wrote every day for six years. So, I mean, sometimes it's hard to keep that up every day, you know, but it's necessary in order to get things done. And if I don't do that, I just set myself back. And that is what frustrates me. And that's what gets me kind of, you know, down on myself sometimes and I have to regain my energy and I have to reset, I have to relax, I have to kind of get silent, get quiet for a minute and kind of restore my focus and my pinpointed meticulous nature that makes me who I am. Like I think it's really important to know who you are and how you work and what you need to get the most out of yourself to do the best that you could do. And when I don't do that every single day, you know, I'm really hard on myself, you know, like I ask a lot of myself, I expect a lot of myself and I, you know, I always say that I never negotiate with myself. But that doesn't mean that I don't push things aside sometimes and then give maybe too much to something else. And that's my way of procrastinating, which is not a good thing ever. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, I do find myself in that situation sometimes and I think it has to do with dealing with the same thing all the time and especially when I get stuck somewhere in a long script and I just can't break through this mountain that I've gotten to where I just have to climb this thing after just climbing 17 other mountains and I'm kind of tired and I'm sore and um, you know just like bothered by it you know and and it's so easy to just just put myself someplace else and I don't know, for me, that's not healthy. It's not a good thing. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, I realized that I had taken a few days where I got off of what I should have been doing. And 
this is me holding myself accountable by actually making a video and putting it out to the universe and um, knowing that if I don't get back on it, that, you know, everybody will know, like, he's full of shit. And I'm not, you know. Like when I say I'm going to do something, I do it. And when I start something, I'm going to finish it. I actually teach workshops on finishing projects. And so if I don't do it myself, what am I? You know, nothing. So I'm back on it now. Um, and also, just real quick, I wanted to say that all of this made me think about the little things in life, you know, like mostly the last couple of days I've been thinking about all of the people throughout my creative career and also my athletic career and my, my whole life, even when I was a kid, you know, there have been quite a few people who have come into my life and done little tiny things for me that I've carried with me for the rest of my life, you know. Um, I haven't really had mentors that much, but I've had collaborators, but I have had people who've dropped little tidbits of power into me, you know. They've, they've helped me along, they've given me some advice, they've maybe pointed something out, they've asked the right questions, and I'm feeling really grateful for that right now. <clears throat> and I'm not going to call anybody out because I don't know if they want their names spoken. And I don't like doing that anyway without, you know, some people get embarrassed by that. But I want to say it's really important to pay attention to everything people say to you and everything people do around you. And it's important to look at people's body language and facial expressions and not just listen to their words, but to really know. And I also think that this is something that's really important when dealing in relationships, you know, like sometimes um, we don't really pay attention. We don't listen. You know, we don't receive. We're just like, you know, putting out information or sharing or, you know, we think, you know, being open and, and, and putting things out there is the best way to be. But sometimes the best way to be is to be quiet and to just shut up and let it sink in and, and look and really, really see the person in front of you and uh, understand that who they are has nothing to do with who you are, right? The way somebody else works, the way somebody else lives, the way somebody else communicates, the way somebody else thinks, it's got nothing to do with you. You know, that's what I tell myself all the time, like it ain't all about me, you know, like my perception of things is my perception and that doesn't necessarily mean it's somebody else's. So it's really important to try to have empathy empathy and pay attention and let somebody be who they are and I think that's going to make you the best artist that you could be too because then you're creating stuff that is not all about you that you're trying to be universal you're trying to create work that is about all of us that brings us together you know that's what I've been thinking about I guess specifically I'm about to shoot a bunch of stuff for my film um, I got to shoot all these iconic places, you know, like I could easily go out and get um, stock footage for what I'm about to do, but I don't want to use stock footage. Like I want to shoot from my perspective, the way I see things, you know, the way that I think it needs to be communicated in my film. You know, like I don't want to just shoot stuff. I want it to be connected to the story and the progression of the story. And I want every single second of this film to move the story forward. And to keep it going. So, I, you know, how is stock footage going to do that? Like, you know, sometimes people go, oh, I just need a, a video of the Statue of Liberty. Well, there are 20 billion videos of the Statue of Liberty, I'm quite sure. And I'm sure every one of them, I'm sure they're all magnificent. But do any of them really, really cover what you're thinking in your head? Like, really? You know, sometimes you got to make the extra effort to do stuff like that, to do it your way. And... Um, not take the easy way out. And so, yeah. And the last thing I'll say is this. This is kind of a technical thing, but I think about this a lot too. Like right now I'm sitting in my living room, right? My living room is a mess right now. If you saw this room, you would be like, how does that guy live like that? It's a mess. It is full of equipment, you know, gear, camera gear, stuff like that, gimbals, lens. It's got everything. And also it's got clothing and, you know, stuff I've been using for this film. And, you know, 
working on a film or working on a play for me is quite a chaotic experience sometimes, you know, even though I'm like ultra organized in my head and I know that there's rhyme or reason to everything that I'm doing, but if somebody else steps in, I think it would be hard for them to understand what I'm doing. And um, so anyway, if you walked in here, you would think it was a mess probably, you know? But when I walk into a situation like that, I always think about the way I work and I just think like, wow, there's a lot of beautiful in here, you know, like um, when I'm in a location where some people might think there's nothing to shoot here, there's nothing, you know, like I, I see like little leaves on the ground or even garbage or, you know, a broken window or something in the area that can look beautiful, that I can try to make it look beautiful in the way I shoot it. I could deal with, you know, the aperture and blur out the background or I can deal with light or angles or, you know, I could try to create something beautiful out of anything, you know? There have been circum circumstances in my life that have been tragic, you know, the, the end of the lives of my mother and my father were brutal and tragic and they went through stuff that nobody should ever have to go through. But I have to say that they were some of the most beautiful times of my life because those were the best times of my relationship with both of them because it was so vulnerable and it was such an intimate time and um, I learned a lot during that, you know, I learned that even in tragedy, there's something beautiful in there if you look for it, and that's life, and that's art, that no matter what, you know, no matter what's going on, no matter how bad it is, no matter how frustrating, no matter how tragic, no matter how disgusting or whatever, there is always something beautiful there if you look hard enough for it. and. Um, I think given what I just said, I think it's worth looking for it as hard as you possibly can. And I just have to think that what that gives you, what that puts in your body is so healthy and so good and so optimistic and, and so inspiring that it's like life affirming. It's, it's, it's air, you know, it's water, it's, it's life. Yeah. So, no matter what, look for the beautiful because it's definitely there. Every minute of every day, something beautiful is somewhere here, right now. <laughs>